Good morning guys. So today, today a quick video and uh, the topic for it will be active checks on the Zabbix agent. So briefly a short story. So since we're talking about active passive and uh, this will also touch a Zabbix agent component. So it is a monitoring process, one of the Zabbix uh, components which can be installed on any Linux Unix machine or on a Windows machines. Uh, even older versions are supported and the greatest benefit that you can get from the Zabbix agent is quite a wide uh, built-in functionality. So quite a lot of metrics items are available from the box. It will be enough to just add them inside the front end and uh, configure your parameters like uh, update interval as example. And uh, what touches the topic of today is uh, agent modes. So doesn't matter where and how you install a Zabbix agent, it is able to operate in uh, two modes, active and passive. And uh, let me show you on the screen what is actually the difference. As you can see, the difference is uh, more or less only in the direction of the communication because we do understand that there might be some environments, let's say it could be a cloud environment, where uh, incoming connections are not allowed absolutely, so only outgoing connections. And it is possible to easily configure any items on the Zabbix agent to be processed as an active checks, which, mean, which means that agent will perform an outgoing connection to the Zabbix server on the port 151 TCP uh, to the internal process of the Zabbix server or proxy also called Trapper and uh, uh, send the data. Send the data uh, based on your update intervals and send it in the chunks. Uh, how the active agent will also know uh, what's the configuration, what items do I need to monitor. So also that part is initiated by the agent itself. So agent connects to the server and requests the configuration. If we're talking about a passive agent, that uh, means that Zabbix server will be performing a connection to an agent. Uh, an internal process of the Zabbix server called Polar will be doing that. So the Polar connects to the agent, the port 150 by default uh, TCP, requests a metric, one single metric like uh, system CPU load, waits for the response and then when it gets the value the connection is closed. So this is the choice how you can, where you can uh, decide how your agent will be working. And here in the front end I have uh, my host created just for the purpose of this video called Zabbix series and inside it I have two items. You see if uh, first of all the name is uh, actually name here is wrong it's not an agent ping it's uh, agent host name so save that. Uh, but the most important types of the items one has Zabbix agent active which means that agent will be connecting to the server getting the config and then sending the collected metrics. And the second one is agent ping passive with just Zabbix agent type, which means that Polar is connecting to the agent, requesting the value from the key agent.ping, getting a metric and closing the connection. And we also see availability of this host, this ZBX uh, green. Uh, just a side note from this, this topic today, to have availability, green or red, anything except a gray, which means unknown, you need to have at least one passive agent item on this host. Like if I would have only two items uh, and all of them would be Zabbix agent active, this availability for the Zabbix agent would still be grayed out, unknown. If I would have 1000 active items, still it would be unknown. If I will have at least one as currently passive Zabbix agent item, I will see the availability of uh, agent interface of this host. Then what's next? Like what's the usual problem when uh, users are configuring active checks? And uh, yeah, like uh, monitoring latest data, you see I currently have two items, active and passive. But if I will go to the monitoring latest data, for this host, you see that I do have a data for my passive check, agent.ping, and the last value is 1, so agent is uh, reachable, the ping is successful. And the second one, which is active, agent hostname, does not get any value. So item is enabled, the update interval is still 5 seconds, 
We know that agent is reachable based on agent.ping, but uh, there is no last check and there is no value. So let's talk about what's, what's the problem and how to fix it. For that, I will need my CLI. And uh, as usually, all my Zabbix instance is uh, running from the Docker containers. So, but for this task, I have a Zabbix agent installed locally on the virtual machine itself, outside, outside of the virtualization. And uh, so the passive agent is working. Let's think about what do we need to configure on the agent side to work with a passive checks. And there's just one parameter in the Zabbix agent configuration file, which is located in Etsy Zabbix, Zabbix, uh, Zabbix agent d.conf. And this parameter is called exactly as a highlighted one, the server. And the server, if you would read the uh, description uh, about this parameter, basically is uh, IP uh, or a DNS name of a Zabbix server or a proxy from which agent will accept connection. So remember, passive checks means that server is connecting to the agent. And here we are specifying from which IP or DNS names agent will accept those connections and answer to the requests. So I do have uh, IP address of my uh, Docker Zabbix server here. That's why uh, my passive checks are working. We see availability green and we see the value of an agent ping. But what is required for active checks to work? There is more than just one parameter. First of all, there is server active. Server active, which again is a list uh, of IP addresses or DNS names to which agent will connect and request the configuration, first of all, and uh, on the second hand, send the data. So still IP or DNS name of the Zabbix server. But uh, since the direction of communication is different, so in case of the server parameter, it's from which IPs we do allow the connections. In case of server active, to which IPs we will be connecting. And usually here, like everybody stop, like, okay, I configured the server active, I've restarted my Zabbix agent, but still um, no data in the front end. And what could be the problem? The problem is missing or incorrect hostname parameter. Uh, I do have some host names set up here from my previous uh, some kind of the tasks. But what's the idea? Like when you have a server active configured, you need to configure a host name. And a host name in the Zabbix agent configuration file must match exactly as you have a host name in the front end. And here I have a Zabbix series. And uh, pay attention, I'm also talking about a host name not the visible name. If I would have a visible name, something else here, here in the configuration host, I would see the visible name, but we need host name. Remember, it's also case sensitive. If I will configure a host name in the agent config file, Zabbix series, but everything with a lowercase, it will not work. So it must match exactly, and it is case sensitive. What's the idea here behind uh, matching a host name in the config file and in the front end? Well, basically when the agent, can, agent connects to the Zabbix server, to the IP or DNS name, which is specified in the server active, agent will also tell like uh, to the server, hey, my uh, host name is uh, something like uh, auto registration currently as I have. Uh, do you have something for me? Do you have some kind of the items that I should check? And uh, the server will check like, nope, I don't have uh, such host in my database, in my configuration. That's why currently that agent is not monitoring any active checks. But if it will say my host name is Zabbix series, and indeed we do have a Zabbix series host uh, configured in our front end, and there is one item with the type Zabbix agent active, it will work. So what we need to do now is uh, change the host name in the agent config file exactly as it is in my front end. So Zabbix series, uh, both words with a capital and save it. Save the file. And of course, after each time you perform some change in the configuration file of the Zabbix components, you need to restart the component itself. And it will take around uh, 
two minutes from now for the first metrics to actually start to appear in our front end. But before we actually see the metrics, let's talk again about the parameters in the config file. We talked about a host name, but actually there are three ways, uh, three steps that Zabbix agent will check. Let's say if the host name is not specified at all. The host name default value is blank. And uh, if I would not write on my own host name specifying the Zabbix series, what would agent do? Agent will always check for the next one, for host name item. And host name item, the default value is system.hostname. So it could be anything, that's the default value. We could also like uh, write, I don't know, some user parameter. Uh, which will be gathering some kind of the value and that value will be used as a hostname. And if hostname item is also not set, like if we would have uh, hostname item equals nothing, then the agent would simply use the value of the system.hostname. And you might say like, um, okay, but previously I didn't have any hostname, I didn't have a hostname item, then why am I... Uh, item when my host with an active checks is still not working in the front end because what's the output of the system host name uh, in my case i can run a zabbix get minus s local host ip so i am requesting a value from an agent and the key will be exactly the same system dot host name and it will return just a local host dot local domain because that's exactly is a host name of my virtual machine which of course does not match uh, host name in in the front end so let's look do we have some values now uh, item became not supported because uh, yeah the value string like I am re requesting a host name which is uh, a string a text information but type of in information in my item is numeric sign. so I need to change it to the text update then I will also execute a reload of the configuration cache just to speed up some time. If that is something not familiar to you, you can check it out in uh, one of the previous videos about the runtime commands. So docker exec uh, Zabbix server Zabbix server capital R config cache reload and uh, while we're still waiting when the item will become supported, we can talk also about the other part, the other difference from the passive checks and active checks. If we talk about the Zabbix agent configuration file, there is a parameter called start agents and uh, it is possible to increase the amount of internal processes uh, till 100. And those start agent processes are responsible exactly for the passive checks. So these ones which means that we can have 100 pre fork processes that are responsible for the passive checks. So if we will throw like uh, a lot, I'm talking about thousands items with a short update interval on the agent, it will perform better as an active check. Because in case with an active agent, there is only one process that is responsible for the active checks. So in general, active checks are better than a passive check simply because we're offloading the Zabbix server. Remember, in case of a passive, the Polar connects and waits for the response. If we are monitoring some custom checks, they might take like 20 seconds, 25 seconds to finish. And Polar will simply wait for the response. If we use an active agent, all of that check is performed on the agent side and Zabbix server just receives already gathered uh, data. But there is just one process for an active checks and there could be 100 processes on the passive agents. So at this moment, we can check the front end again, uh, monitoring latest data. And there we go. We see the value from uh, our active agent item, active agent type, which means that this one used only outgoing connections from the agent to the Zabbix server, which of course could also be a Zabbix proxy. And uh, that's about it. That's all for uh, this short video, how to use the Zabbix agent active checks. And uh, 
Despite there might be a situations when you must, uh, the network specifics of your environment requests you to use one or another, active or passive, so polling or trapping. Uh, if there is a choice and uh, you don't know which is the best, uh, in general, I do suggest to use active checks to offload your Sabic server. But again, be careful if you have like a lot, a lot of slow checks on that host. That's it for today. Hope you liked it. Uh, just like usual, all the questions, comments in the comments. And uh, I don't know how often, but we will make uh, definitely another Q&A uh, video answering to all of them. Um, maybe you'll get answers even in the comments before that from me. We'll see. Depends on the question. But for today, that's it. So thank you for your time and uh, see you in the next videos.